So can I request uh, Dilip to uh, to kindly take over the discussion that's, session? That's, Sarah, please. Help me load that's how it's Yeah, sure. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I'm going to say that. Hello. Hello. Yes, do leave your audible. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so in this discussion session, we'll uh, kind of take questions. Uh, or if anybody wants to uh, kind of uh, elaborate on their talk, uh, we can do uh, any of these things. So, I should mention right in the beginning that. Uh, uh, Sergey Guka would, won't be around because it is too early for him in the day. I had written to him whether he would be available, but uh, I don't think uh, he would be available. But uh, uh, Laura Done would be available, I think, uh, and I think I can see her uh, online. Uh, the other uh, speakers were Sujay, uh, Semanti, Amitabh, Rajesh, uh, I mean Rajesh Gupta, uh, Suman Kundu. Uh, Ayan Patra, Sabya Sachi, uh, Laura Dune, of course, uh, Arindam, Chatter, uh, Arindam Bhattacharji, uh, Manglesh, uh, <coughs> Aditra Banerji, and, and Kushal Chakravarti. So, uh, so let's start with uh, the morning session. Uh, Sergey wouldn't be around, but uh, uh, we could... Uh, Oh, sorry, Dilip. I just uh, uh, just wanted to uh, remind that Rajesh, uh, because of some emergency, yes, Rajesh also wouldn't be around. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I he did write to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, in the morning session, we have Sujay Semanti Dutta, uh, Amitabh Birmani. Uh, anybody having any questions about uh, those talks? Okay, <clears throat> if not, maybe we can uh, go to the next set of uh, speakers like Suman Kundu. Yeah, uh, well, uh, Arnav wrote saying that he has a, a question. Uh, Arnav Kundu has a question for Semanti Dutta. Uh, Arnav, can you just uh, unmute yourself and ask? Am I audible? Uh, yes. Okay. Arna? Oh, he has to type here. Oh, he has to type probably. Yeah. Uh, so, our... Uh, uh... So are you asking? Okay, sorry. Uh, so are you asking about uh, how ERG can work in DS uh, space, uh, DS safety correspondence probably? Okay, actually, wow. Yeah, so maybe I'll just read out the question again. Uh, uh, is there any sense in which analytically continuing in the t, in t variable in the ERG to complex values, whether it, it makes sense? Uh, okay. I suppose it means not just limited, probably not just limited to just doing, say, DC -tar. Yeah, okay, I understand. But uh, actually, if you can, uh, like, I don't know about analytically continuing in T variable, uh, we'll have any problem. But uh, will there, uh, if uh, someone wants to try to prove uh, DSCFT, for example, from this formalism, uh, uh, not will be quantum field theory, for example, in DSCFT will be always, it is not unitary, right? So, uh, 
I don't know, like, uh, if the question comes from the inspiration that uh, we can do the same thing to DSCFT kind of thing, or maybe you are telling that it's not limited to. Uh, but uh, I was looking at uh, that whether the same kind of thing can be extended to DSCFT. So there I was having problem that uh, uh, this field theory at the boundary is not a unitary theory. So there it might have problem, but uh, means I don't know that uh, whether without any problem you can analytically continue the variable. Means I haven't seen anything like any work like that. Okay. Uh, I, don't know, uh, I wonder whether he has any. So is that okay or maybe I can. Uh, formally, yeah. okay, so he's, he's written something okay, formally form just as an equation. Uh, does it make sense or map to something interesting? If you do some such analytic co continuation, whether it it leads to something interesting. Oh, you are telling, okay, T, okay, then uh, you know some quantum system. Um, <clears throat> So, um, okay. Um, so, if you are telling that scale is going to I in I, suppose lambda is going to I lambda, right? Something like that. Then, um, so well, I think he's saying T goes to IT. So, it becomes Schrodinger's equation. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something like that. But he's. But lambda is going to I lambda, right? In that case, like energy is going to. Well, like complex energy. Is he still T? Well, I think he's talking about T, not lambda. Log lambda. Uh, uh, so, so, sorry, this is very, uh, very, very. Uh, this thing, you know, not not sharp at all. But yes, I mean, I was just thinking uh, at the structural level uh, as a, as an equation. If I send T to I tau, for example. Um, let's forget about what it might mean or whether it's connected to DC ter and whatnot. Uh, just as an equation, is that is that uh, somewhat of an interesting quantity in in any sense? Uh, yeah, it's Schrodinger's equation then. Uh, uh, yes, I mean, uh, I was trying to go somewhere with with it. Uh, it is of course a Schrodinger equation. Um, so, so uh, uh, let, let me let me ask you a, a bit more precise question to which I don't think this analytic continuation is related, but uh, nonetheless, let me ask anyways. So is there any, any sense in which, for example, this ERG equations uh, uh, can be uh, can can be uh, can be viewed when you complexify the energy scale, for example, uh, or analytically continue the energy scale? As, as I said, this is very vague. So you know, I'm, I'm just. Right. Fishing for some interesting comment. That's all there is to it at this point. Not really. I mean, if you, if you just do T goes to I tau, then the uh, it's like uh, treating the action as a Hamiltonian, and then it's just Hamiltonian evolution of a quantum system. But yeah, I don't know about energy complexification. I don't know what that would do. Okay. Thank. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Maybe I can. I can uh, probably ask a bit, bit sharper question uh, to, uh, and maybe uh, ask, yeah, sure. ask you offline. That would be probably better. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I have a question regarding Rajesh's talk. I know he's not around, but someone maybe be able, able to answer it. Yeah. Like. Uh, <laughs> So it's like, uh, maybe you can drop a line to Rajesh. I can send, give you his email address, but uh, it's difficult for somebody else to answer his que question on his uh, seminar. No? Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. How about questions to Amitabh or Sujay? Or Suman Kundu. So, so can I can I ask a question to Suman? Uh, uh, 
Uh, yes. Uh, so this is this is also uh, you know very very broad, and uh, I I would actually like to know a bit more about the details. But I'm curious about the comments uh, that that you and Shiraj were making uh, in terms of uh, trying to connect uh, you know this uh, this correlator and whatnot to to uh, uh, to a particular uh, uh, you know amplitude uh, uh, regge growth uh, kind of constraint. So, so I, I, I think I, mean, I, th I think I know. Uh, uh, I understand the, the 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 statement that you made about Rindler space, and in particular this uh, this correlator growth in regel limit and so on and so forth. But, but is, is there a is there a sense in which you know? So, so what I mean to say is that in in the CFT there are many states. The thermal states, of course, is a very nice state, but that's that's a that, let, let's put it this way. That, that's a very typical state, and so on and so forth. There are many atypical states and, and you know, many interesting things you can do with CFT. Is there a geometric way of seeing what is happening in the amplitude picture uh, for each of those? Uh, you know, this is also a very naive question. I mean, I'm basically asking you to make sense of my question and give an answer. So it's really an unfair question, but uh, is, 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 is it sort of, I mean, do, do, do you see what I'm trying to maybe formulate even? as a question so uh, as a so as chaos bound is stated it is calculated for the particular thermal state and if you take a particular temperature on that uh, th thermophile double state so that is beta is equal to 2 pi that relates to a rindler space uh, structure and uh, and from that Rindler space coordinate, if you go to the uh, uh, go to the corresponding, uh, uh, you know, uh, instead of Rindler time quantization, if you do a normal time quantization, the same correlator will look like uh, will look like a time ordered correlator, and uh, that's how we could have uh, uh, translated the bound to the uh, to the flat stresses matrix. Uh, but so, so what I'm asking is let, let's let's not think about thermal states, but let's think, think about a typical state for which many correlators will behave thermally. Okay. Is there any, uh, I mean, of course, in the bulk, we do not quite know uh, how to construct a typical state. Maybe that's where this question will get stuck or maybe yes. boiled down to. But I'm just thinking, I mean, in terms of picture, is this way of thinking, does, I mean, does, does it make, uh, does it help in anything or it's just... Uh, uh, it's not maybe not a useful way of or not known whether it's useful to uh, to think about it no i ha i think i i have not much to say except the fact that it's a it's it's a i mean in this particular problem we could have managed to get the time order uh, with this but but no i can't say anything more than this but uh, and maybe I can just add one comment. That is the, the normal Minkowski vacuum is the thermal state, is a thermal state in Riddler space. And that's the state we're working in. So in some sense, it's quite a special state. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 I, that I understand. Uh, so I was, I was just wa wondering, it's just a very, very vague uh, wondering really, uh, that uh, instead of that, if we, if we could somehow, uh, you know, is there a th way to think about some typical state just by slicing Minkowski in some some strange way? Or oh, that's not uh, that's not the right question to ask. No, it, may, it may be a good question. I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. Uh, the, the, the second thing to say is that we were eager to use the theorem that yeah. uh, that correlators in the thermal state cannot grow faster than a certain speed. So for for our purposes, the thermal state was. You know, no other state would have done the job because we didn't wouldn't have been able to use a theorem. But uh, your question is a good one, and I, I just don't have anything useful to say. I mean, sorry, just to maybe uh, I'm kind of thinking out loud. Really, no, 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 no sharp notion in mind, but just thinking. I mean, if you want to create an arbitrary state from path integral, or uh, I mean. It's essentially just, uh, uh, I mean, I, I could do it with an Euclidean path integral, right? right? With with appropriately inserted regulators and so on and so forth. So on the face of it, it might look a lot like a thermal state. Although, I mean, it, of course, it's not a thermal state, but uh, uh, no, I, I don't have anything precise to say, but yeah. I'm just hoping the, you might have like something. You talked about in your talk, right? Something that thermalizes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, no, it sounds interesting, and you know, there, there would continue to be the asymptotic bounds 
Because right. if you organize it fast enough, you would have the same, for long, for long enough time behavior, you would have the same uh, growth limit, I would imagine. I'm not sure if there's something, for your purpose of scattering, there may or may not be something clean to learn about this. I just, nothing clear to say, but it sounds sort of I, interesting. I see. Okay, thanks, thanks. Any other questions? Could I, could I ask a question to Laura? Are we going in talk order? Sorry, please. Uh, no, no, not necessarily. Okay. Sure, please go ahead. Uh, so, Laura, I'm going to repeat a question I asked during your talk, which maybe I didn't ask clearly enough, so let me ask again. Um, when we're studying ADS-CFT, um, we allow for, for some purposes, it's useful to allow for normalizable boundary conditions. Okay. Then we're studying a state in the theory, uh, it's a finite energy state, and uh, when, when we want to do that, we allow only normalizable boundary conditions. But for other purposes, it's sometimes useful to go beyond that, to study boundary conditions that do not correspond to any state in ADS, any finite energy state in ADS, to turn on non-normalizable modes. And uh, that uh, has a different interpretation in that context. We know the interpretation is coupling the field theory to an operator. So uh, not trying to put flat space into ADS, but just treating flat space as an object by itself. Uh, it seemed to me that the boundary conditions you, you described in the first part of your talk, the early part of your talk, were boundary conditions which described finite energy, energy states in flat space. Uh, now, I was wondering whether we could go beyond these boundary conditions, whether it makes sense, to, whether it's something we, want, we might want to do for some reason, to go beyond these boundary conditions to turn on boundary conditions that were not do not correspond to finite energy states in flat space, uh, and would be the conceptual analog of the non-normalizable boundary conditions in ADS. In that context, that was very useful because it got, it had a very clear field theory interpretation. And I was wondering whether there may be some mileage to be gained by going beyond the kind of boundary conditions you've talked about uh, and trying to find interpretations of those for the boundary field. Sorry for the length of the question. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, probably I didn't address the, the question properly be earlier. Um, yes, indeed. I think so. So basically, I think uh, basically this finite energy scattering state are captured by these uh, operators where the conformal dimension lies on the principal series uh, precisely. But um, I guess this, this other state would yeah, correspond to other, other value of the of of, of delta. So, um, is is it what you had in mind that? Yeah, uh, it, it uh, may be, but I, I was asking just from the point of view of GR. You know, you're yeah, talking yeah. about boundary conditions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If I understood right. Those boundary conditions are sort of tuned to capture finite energy states. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, you want to allow for yeah, yeah. I think that that's is something interesting to do indeed. Yeah. Uh, and basically, that's what <laughs> somehow people are are doing when they are trying to relax, you know, boundary conditions and allow for uh, for extended phase space that is uh, going beyond the, the bondi messner zagler or typical asymptotic symmetry uh, uh, business. Um, and then, okay, yeah, of course, you you have this. Then usually, people, typically, people in GR didn't allow it because indeed you have charges that diverge at the boundary. But now we we understand how to take care of this and to how to say renormalize, uh, you know, the, the 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 charges at infinity. So now I think people are going towards this direction. Um, it, but it's not, yeah. Um, is is it what you had in mind, like from somehow yeah. relaxing? Um, Yes, this is what I have, had in mind. Again, the, with the analogy with ADS, we could just solve the linearized equations for a field near the boundary, and we find two solutions. One that corresponds, that's normalizable, it corresponds to a state. And then there's another one that sort of blows up, but we don't throw it away, we, we identify it with the source. Is there something like this in flat space? Yes, 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 there is something like that. Actually, there is a sense of which I think, yes, there there is this, this uh, this is very vague what I'm saying because I, I didn't work it out in details, but there is a sense in which, you know, this shadow transform somehow, this this shadow transformation in the in the celestial CFT, if you look at what it does in, in the bulk, somehow it 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 it's it's mapping some 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 states which have a 
you know, um, usual, uh, let's say, one of our behavior to, to, to things that are over leading in powers of R. So I think this is there is probably an, a precise sense in which this non normalizable state which correspond to do somehow a shadow tron is very vague what I'm saying, but I think there is precisely some, there, there could be some precise statement to be done on, on this, uh, along these lines, if that makes sense. Okay, thank you very um, much. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, can I can I say something, Laura? Just a uh, small yes. thing. Uh, so, yes. Shiraz, there is one qualitative difference. I mean, in the sense of what you are saying, that when we look at the uh, field equations in ADS, we get the, and we look at the you know modes near the boundary, we get a quadratic equation for the exponent. And then we get the, you know, it, so it has a, you can get a normalizable as well as a non-normalizable mode, right? I mean, in, the, mm -hmm. in that case. Whereas in the flat case, you, you don't get any quadratic equation for the exponent. So. If you, if you just solve it, I mean, you will get uh, only no, normalizable mode. It, it, it doesn't arise in the same way. I mean, as Laura is saying, you could have weaker follow-ups and get non-normalizable modes, but they don't come in the same way as in the ADS, where you have a quadratic equation for the exponent and, uh, you know, you can get uh, two, two solutions. One gives you normalizable and one non-normalizable mode. I see. So if you linearize the equations around the, around flat space. Yeah. You never find a solution that violates your falloff conditions. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you start with weaker falloff to begin with, like you start with you know perturbations which grow as with R some power, you know that will violate. I'm just saying that you, if you start with, let's say you start with falloff which is one by R to the alpha, and you want to solve for alpha, which is what you will do in ADS, right? And alpha will satisfy some quadratic equation. Here, alpha will not satisfy a quadratic equation. I see. So, so and so then, how will you get? The, presumably, there exist solutions of Einstein gravity that violate these boundary conditions. How would you get those solutions? I mean, could, you, could we see those at linearized order? I I just, yeah. 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 I mean, if you, if you started with weaker falloffs, I mean, you, you just say that I start with, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Suppose I'm not starting with any falloff. I just take flat space. Yeah. And I just solve del square phi is equal to zero. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So you, you just solve and you do the large R expansion at constant U. And you know the equation that you will get from there is just alpha equal to minus one. I mean, one if you have r to the alpha, and you you get equation which gives you alpha to equal to minus one. You don't get some quadratic equation. For so alpha. that means there are no solutions to Einstein's equations that violate your your boundary conditions. For the scalar field, I think this I I don't know about the you know full GR equations. <laughs> but but yeah, field, I, look, I mean, if you look at the the spin two conformal primary wave functions, which are Solution yes. of linearized Einstein's equation uh, for any conformal dimension delta. Yes. So basically, these things for the other people, these are uh, somehow uh, gauge equivalent to Mellin transform the plane wave times the helicity spin to helicity factor. Then this this conformal, conformal primary are solution of linearized Einstein's equation, and for for delta equal to um, to one, this would be the typical follow. But, but, uh, for but they, they don't, they, they diverge in U, right? Not in R, right? I mean, I, I think uh, she has R oh, diverge. Oh, yeah, no, they, they also diverge in R. I mean, typically I they will so. have um, both <laughs> things and they might have also, you know, log of, as you know very well. Yeah, yeah. But log I mean, of R and, and log of U's, actually, log of U over R. <laughs> Um, but if you just look at massless scalar field equation, then you know if you just do a larger expansion, I mean the we don't get a quadratic equation for the exponent, right? I think that that is I think that's what Shiraz is asking, probably, right? I mean, yeah, right. Okay. I, yeah, but, but I, actually, I was even more interested in Einstein linearized Einstein equations, just because we were at the space time. But uh, so, you, are you saying that there's a phenomenon that happens for linearized Einstein equations that does not have a counterpart for the scalar? No, no, I don't know if the exponent. I mean. I think it's a bit different in ADS, as, far as I understand. I mean, in ADS, we get both modes, right? We, ah. uh, that does, I think that all that, all I'm saying is that doesn't happen. They don't, they well, don't come together. Sorry, what I'm not understanding, Alok, is that, uh, that, that, do we see as a linearized solution that violates your boundary conditions or not? If we do, then something like that is happening, right? Yeah, it's, uh, because it's null boundary. I'm not really sure if it's a good comparison with the ADS case. I mean, it's. If we uh, don't see a solution that violates your boundary conditions, then your boundary conditions are not even boundary conditions. They're just automatic. Right? If it's impossible to violate them. You know, I would say you, you do that. No, no, you need, you need. No, no, you need. I'm just saying that it's not coming as the, like, they don't come in pairs. I think maybe that that's the only thing I'm saying. That, I see. Know, that, that, that's not coming from a quadratic equation. 
yes fine 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 but but there's some some mechanism that uh, yeah yeah yes lord i think really right right, right. Can, yeah can i make yeah, i think they don't come in pairs yeah could i make one comment so yeah. i think the, uh, the the one thing that distinguishes these modes is that i think uh, in flat space you know uh, in um, even in lorentzian uh, the signature the mo- one of the modes is actually blowing up in the bulk if you're solving it in rt so in the in the, in the, in lorentzian signature in ads the normalizable mode is regular in the interior So, I mean, the non-normalizable mode and the normalizable mode both are regular in the interior. But what happens in uh, flat space is that uh, regularity in the interior is still not true for, um, you know, both modes. Lorentzian signature in the Euclidean signature, in you know, both are similar, roughly speaking similar. But Chetan, they don't come in pairs. I think that is true. Right? I mean, I think in ADS they come in pairs. I think you're talking about. I'm. I'm not saying that they come. They, they, you have to solve an indicial equation. I'm saying that there are two kinds ah. of solutions. Yeah, yeah. That is no. That that is that is true. And Laura is also explaining that we see them. Yeah. With these relaxed boundary conditions, like you know, of being. No, I'm just talking actually about scalar field. If you just solve the same scalar field. Yeah, class, yeah. yeah. It could. We could do that also. Why are you say they don't come in pairs? Don't you have always, you know, the Golston mode and the memory mode, which are. Somehow. Well, those are not. I mean, uh, are they, I mean, I think Shira's question is that in the if we solve this indicial equation, like in ADS, right? I mean, we take the z to the alpha and solve for alpha. I mean, alpha solves a quadratic equation, right? Z equal to zero being the boundary. So we look at the equation close to the boundary, and then so you have two roots for alpha, and one gives a normalizable. Mm-hmm. I, I I'm saying that doesn't happen. That's true. Uh, let me make a comment here. Um, uh, so if you do the spherical harmonic expansion also, then it would happen. So, okay, but you know, yeah, but that's extra. <laughs> yeah, that is extra. So I mean, if if you look at uh, spherical harmonic L Y L M mode, then you will have R to the L, R to the L plus one, one over R to the L plus one. These kinds of modes will come. Yeah, but not yeah. just if you do R expansion. Yeah. yeah. No. I'm sorry. Just just to follow. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm taking too much time. But just to follow up. I mean. In ADS, it was very useful to turn on these non-normalizable modes. They are a clear interpretation in terms of the boundary field theory. Do you suspect that something like this might be true in flat space? I mean, are we supposed? To, is it? Is all we're going to be allowed to do ever throw things in and out, or are we going to be able to perturb this theory at the boundary? I th- I suppose is the question with a sort of operator definition. No, I think as Laura is also saying that if you there are these modes which are uh uh you know which which are definitely growing with r if you look at uh you know its uh, modes which are goldstone modes for sub sub leadings of gravitons etc so they are um uh, they are definitely growing with it. so there, there are modes which will diverge the asymptotic flatness naively but uh, yeah. and do you think that they will end up having an interesting physical interpretation that at the moment we just set them to zero but when we think harder we'll one will identify their values with some No, I think I think in this W infinity, maybe Laura can say more that she talk about. I don't. We are not setting them to zero. So the, these are the, the symmetry generators, which give you this, you know, these higher symmetries, which she talked about uh, beyond BMS. Uh, those symmetry generators diverge with R, with powers of R. So you know, uh, if you go beyond BMS, then you get these symmetry generators, which go with R square, R cube, etc. So those are, and those are conjugate to the. Uh, you know the goldstone modes for that symmetry so so they, they are already present uh, in the in the theory is that what you are asking uh, shiva yeah, yeah i suppose that's what i'm asking and i was asking what the you know for instance could could any an experimentalist ever turn on these modes is this yeah something? i guess they would be the imprint would be memory effects which but the higher somehow the contrary is that the higher the less normalizable the state would they correspond to sub Uh, they will correspond to subleading in our memory effects, but I think that that's the observable that will capture these these things. So um, as as uh, Alok was showing that, you know, you have the um, uh, you have this tower of overleading symmetry parameters that blow up more and more with R, and they are all canonically paired with another mode, which uh, capture precisely uh, memory effects. But these memory effects will be uh, Subleading in 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 R, so you have you know this displacement memory and then the what people have called spin memory and probably a whole tower of things that 
that will show up at lower, so it will be even more and more difficult to probe, but I, I would say that's the thing that would capture that. Okay, last question and I'll shut up. Uh, sorry, sorry, Shira, sorry, before I can just add something to what, what Laura said. So yeah, if, yeah, you look at, yeah if, if you just look at QED and uh, if you if you just look at um, if you just look at a tree level uh, uh, scattering, so if you forget the loop effects, then there are these conservation laws, which are basically telling us that the field strength, which goes as one by R to the n, you know, uh, is is in a in a precise way conserved between scry plus scry minus. So the mode conjugate to this grows as R to the you know, uh, R to some power. So 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 those are the norm normalizable modes that. Uh, arise. Uh, these are these higher W, I mean, analogs of this W infinity symmetry she talked about in QED. Uh, 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 but only for tree level amplitudes. I mean, you know, we, 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 can, we can see these conservation laws explicitly, and the modes conjugate are these modes that diverge with R. Okay, absolutely. Let, absolutely. Let me say, uh, Shiraz, can I make one more comment about, I think it may be related to what you're saying, because um, so the, uh, the, if it's, the, I, the, the analog of uh, uh, you know, one analog, one way to generalize this uh, source, uh, you know, uh, normalizable versus non-normalizable is to so solve instead of a Dirichlet-like boundary value problem. If you solve a, an actual source problem in the bubble, so so in ADS we typically solve a Dirichlet boundary value problem, but instead of that you solve a, the, the the wave equation, but with a bulk source. And if you solve that, what you find is that the mode that you know, there are, as I said, in Lorentzian signature, there are two modes. One of them diverges in the bulk, but all both of them, um, you know, die down at infinity. So the one that diverges in the bulk is it corresponds to the source, and the one that, uh, for example, I mean, the one that we typically talk about corresponds to the one, uh, you know, the homogeneous mode. So there is a homogeneous mode that dies down, and the so the one that is sourced by the bulk source is the one that is, uh, you know. Uh, dies down at uh, is the one that is singular on the bulk and dies down to infinity. So this is these are the two. The re both of them die down to infinity, and that's the reason why, as uh, Alok was saying, it's not you know there is nothing to distinguish them from the boundary, sort of. Okay. Okay. Uh, so just my final question is: is it, it's I get the sense from what all of you are saying from Alok and Laura and Chetan that that uh, uh, though you started with certain boundary conditions, you're now actually dealing with fields that violate those boundary conditions. You know, it's a sort of, if I understood right from the structure of your talk, you said, these are my boundary conditions. I'm going to start with things that that ma maintain these fall-offs. And now you're saying that these, I don't know, high-end yes. operators violate mm -hmm. these boundary conditions. So what are the rules? I mean, are, are we developing the rules as we go along? Or? Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. So indeed, if you want to capture certain aspect of the subsector, like as I was saying, like the subleading and sub subleading of graviton theorem, for instance, you will have to allow for uh, modes that violate bondi messner zeck expansion. And and uh, if you ev even want to be able to see this, these things, it was already the case for, you know, this stress tensor guy corresponds to poor rotation, which, which uh, already involves some violation of the fall off. Uh, so you have to allow to to change the round sphere metric, uh, and then you will allow to 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 violate more and more the fallout. So, what are the rules of the game, and how this is something that we are figuring out on the way? I would say, like, how far we can go, and what you know, what what are the most general con boundary conditions you can have that capture all the physical observables? That's something that's, uh, where I think it's we are trying to figure out. Yeah. Thank you. Can I just add, 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 add something, uh, Shira? So. Uh, I mean, if we look at, I mean, to at the extent we understand these things that, you know, it, it, for example, as Laura is saying, the super rotation, naively, it seems like they violate this follow up. But what they do not violate is the asymptotic flatness. So even though they violate this bond D match, uh, you know, BMS type expansion, if you look at the metric you get after a super rotation and you compute the wild tensor, it still falls off as you would expect for an asymptotically flat. Space time. So one adds some extra modes on the sphere at infinity such that the while doesn't. So the rules of the game, at least to the extent we understand it, is that we do not want to somehow, we want to not spoil the asymptotic flatness because we know that, you know, even if you have soft radiation at, you know, in soft expansion, we don't, it will not mess up with the asymptotic flatness, right? So, so uh, 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 you know, it, it, it's, it may violate the BMS expansion of the metric, but not the flatness. I mean, so that's the one strong constraint one has that uh, 
and we understand it well up to super rotation. I think that, uh, that uh, no, not for the this W infinity symmetries that we don't exactly know, right? I mean, Laura, is that correct? Let me say it like. <laughs> One quite question, kind of a follow up. So, this, if you are interested in this, uh, I mean, if you want to think of this setup as uh, and try uh, in analogy with this more conventional ADS CFT, that is, you have source and response, uh, that would require time, right? But this dual theory, proposed theory, seems to not have time. It's just a two dimensional one. So, 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 how is this? Uh, how would this question eventually? Tie up to this, uh, you know, if one wants such an interpretation for the boundary CFT. Well, there is a notion a of, of time evolution anyway. Um, there, so there is an operator on the celestial sphere which 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 uh, accounts for time evolution. It's it's this operator that shifts the dimension delta actually by one unit. So there is still the the time evolution is still encoded, but it's as I and uh, I was trying to to say that it's indeed. The, the fact that we are using this Malin transform makes the, 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 you know, the time evolution repackaged in a very uh, weird way, but it's, it's still there. So one would have to understand precisely what it means um, in terms of the, the spectrum, but, but it's still that's, encoded. That's encoded. I see you're saying the time dimension would be encoded in the continuity of the conformal dimension spectrum. Yes. So, yes. So, 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 uh, uh, in order to see this more transparently, you would uh, propose that you change a basis again back to time coordinate, and That's, then you would you would have yeah. a more manifest dynamics. Yeah, exactly. So basically, there are different ways one could try to attempt that space holography. I mean, this celestial uh, picture is is uh, making the you know the conformal <laughs> symmetry manifest, and then you can use all the machinery of. Of usual CFT, but then you have to deal with this, uh, with this spectrum and this uh, weird uh, effect of super translations. Uh, you might want to try directly formulating a theory on on scry on the infinity, and that's a that's a also a possibility. And you know, you 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 would gain something, you would lose others. So it's good to look at the different angles. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, there are a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, so one of them says that uh, for asymptotically flat, uh, sorry, uh, uh, it says that like if the symmetries are not the symmetries or the gravitational asymmetries, can someone comment on the relevance of the, them for the scattering problem? This is probably in the context of W1 plus infinity, which is probably not a symmetry of the classical uh, uh, scattering. Any comments about that? Hello. Mm, yeah. Um, I mean, for sure, the the very first, you know, um, I I I don't know what these are, but for, for sure, the the very the first, you know, towers. The leading subleading sub subleading were shown to be symmetries of gravitational S matrix modulo some some subtleties. Um, so, so maybe so, I can expand actually. Uh, I think on this question, yeah, so I think the, yeah. the thing is that the in this W infinity at least one manifestation that was you know worked out by I don't know if Shamik is there in the audience and Partha and others that you break the super translation charge into these currents, right? The uh, you know three currents. Um, uh, you know, this holomorphic anti holomorphic currents. I mean, uh, each, each, the single charge is broken up into various pieces, and and those are not conserved, right? Individually, I mean, you know, the, the this is not the old super translation current of Steve Berger and Taylor, but you know, further split, chiral split of these currents into different components, which seem to generate this W infinity algebra, right? Uh, oh, yeah, because it's uh, just a uh say holomorphic sector or something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I mean, you split the soft factor into like two pieces and one is the current uh, plus one and one is one minus one. And those are not conserved. Right? I mean, those are not the, uh, clearly not conserved because there's some more, you know, some combination is conserved between scry plus and- Oh plus. yeah, now I understand the question. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so in that yes. context, I think the question is- 
Can I ask something related? So, what is the status of super rotations at space like infinity? Do we have a realization of that? At space at infinity? Um, For rotations? Yeah, I. So I don't think it has been worked. Well, maybe I look. Yeah. So maybe, but but no, I, I yeah, there. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just one thing. I mean, in perturbative gravity, I think only Amitabh we understand. Not like it in full GR and like super translations. We do not have a yeah. conservation data. It might be possible to extend the result of, you know, a new uh, and. In perturbative gravity, in perturbative gravity, the asymptotic equations of motion in, in I guess you do it in the bike schmidt coordinates or something of that type. So uh, asymptotic equations of motions are satisfied or how does Yeah, that... yeah, we work, I mean, you can work in the Donder gauge and, you know, you can, uh, you can derive this large gauge transformation, right? So you, uh, uh, and you can write down the charges, which are really the moments of the wild tensor at u equal to minus and v equal to plus infinity. And then you can show that they are conserved, at least in perturbatively. Uh, uh, but, you know, it, it's not, uh, I don't think there's a proof as Laura is saying in full GR. Uh, I mean, no, but I think it's like it, same I as in QED, so, you know, it can be shown. Not at the same, yeah, not at the same extent, I mean, but I think so, something that is coming. Yeah. So the, reason, the, the main reason I'm asking is that if you do the asymptotic expansion of Einstein's equations at space like infinity in this. Uh, no, that's not what, uh, that's not what is done. Uh, I mean, you, you do the expansion, you are getting, writing these charges as tri plus and tri minus. And then as, as I think she was explaining, you are writing them as angular momentum aspect at u equal to minus and v equal to plus infinity. And then you want to show that the, uh, you know, at I naught, if you look at the equations at I naught uh, as a hyperbola, then you want to show that this aspect is conserved, which in linearized theory one can show. So, or, or, okay, but the metric that you have on the hyperboloid, that yeah. does not solve Einstein's equations, asymptotic Einstein's equations. No, uh, it will solve, I think, uh, Einstein's equation. Uh, okay. But we can, we can, yeah, we can chat. Off. I mean, it's like, I'm, yeah, in QED, it has been shown. I, I would think it would be similar to QED case, at least linear. I think. Okay, so there's a question from Somdatta. Somdatta, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, so. <clears throat> So I, I would like to tie in what Laura said at the end of her talk with the rest of the uh, other talks. Uh, she said at the end of the talk that maybe uh, it's worth exploring the soft modes on the horizon of a black hole. And I, I was just thinking whether these tensionless strings, uh, which uh, I mean, the ordinary strings, be which become tensionless at the horizon of the black hole, maybe they can uh, supply some of those soft modes. I, I don't know. Because the spectrum uh, of those tensionless strings, uh, they are kind of, I don't know, they are massless to start with, but uh, to, be, be, to be soft, the energies would have to go to zero. So I don't know, but maybe people can discuss things on these lines. Yeah, maybe there are some interesting connection there. I don't have any some anything smart to say on that. Then. Okay, uh, maybe you can uh, ask Alok Mishra to ask a question. He also put his hand up. Yeah, hi. Uh, sorry, I was um, uh, virtually running around, uh, so I I missed uh, a few things, but uh, I just wanted to. Uh, it's I know it's pretty late, but I just wanted to uh, um, squeeze in a comment uh, related to these non-normalizable non, uh, modes that Shiraz was asking about. I, and by providing a context in which uh, they've been found to exist. So if, for example, one looks at uh, these um, generalizations of uh, clermont strassler geometries, especially the ones uh, in the gravitational side, which involve a resolved what defined conifold, and one tries to construct their n theory uplift. And then one looks at uh, um, scalar gauge invariant combinations of scalar perturbations. Then one can actually show that if, you're, you, if you have a black hole in the background, uh, uh, then uh, if you, you talk about 
relating the resolution parameter of the S2 blow up in the geometry with the horizon radius. And uh, what happens is that the equations of motion for these uh, scalar metric perturbations involve the, uh, the horizon appearing as an irregular singular point. So uh, if you try to actually solve uh, uh, the equations of motion, then you would see that if you, uh, if you take an ansatz in which uh, you would say that, uh, and you also have non-conformality in the setup. So if you say that uh, the resolution parameter, which is the radius of the S2 blow up, is related directly to the horizon radius, uh, uh, up to uh, non-conformality corrections, then you get uh, good modes. But if you actually say that uh, the uh, the resolution parameter is related uh, to the horizon radius through the non-conformality factor, then you turn out to uh, have a non-normalizable mode. So that just wanted to throw in one context where that appears. Anybody? Uh, Sujita has a hand up. Maybe Sujita wants to ask a question. Sujita, maybe you can ask a question. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, uh, great. Uh, hi, Laura. Thanks for the very nice talk. I, I was just uh, thinking so. Uh, in light of all the questions that we just had now. And uh, so when you, when we think of celestial holography, it's said that we are comparing the 4D gravity theory to this 2D celestial CFT. But in what sense is it fair to actually say it's a 2D theory? Because you know uh, we still need a time, a sense of a time direction, right? Uh, one cannot describe all, all the features of our 4D scattering amplitudes or soft theorems uh, just on the uh, I'm just in terms of these two coordinates on the celestial sphere you still need a uh, sense of time so is it not a 2d cft but also with the preferred no direction uh, of time or something uh yes yeah, so um um uh, maybe sorry if i'm repeat myself but there is the you you see there is the the, the time evolution is still encoded that's something that Maybe we don't emphasize enough or we don't explain well when we talk about that, but um, you see the, 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 tr the translation or the time evolution is, uh, is an operator which is, uh, has a well-defined um, form. It's exponential of partial delta, where delta is the, is the conformal dimension of the celestial operators. So, so it's, it's needed formulated on a 2D, on a 2D uh, sphere, but the time evolution is encoding and is precisely making all this funny mixture and this continuous spectrum in, in Delta. Uh, and again, as I was saying that it, it, it might be, it, there might be another proposal for flat space holography, which is like, you know, more uh, field theory living on, 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 on null infinity. And I don't think these are necessarily, you know, incompatible uh, point of views. Uh, but so just to emphasize, we do have this, uh, um, we, we do have time evolution and there is a precise sense in which you can, you can see, for instance, I don't know, uh, you could see, you know, the Bondi mass loss formula in terms of, of celestial, uh, celestial holography. This should be able to encode it. Everything is complicated because you have, as you know, fluxes going out, non-conservation of charges and stuff, but um, it's, it's there. It's, it's, it has to be there. I see. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So uh, just to understand correctly, uh, do you know how these BMS fluxes or the change in the Bondi mask aspects is encoded in the uh, celestial picture? Is it already known? I, I didn't get the point, sorry. Yeah, so, um, so basically, what we managed to 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 understand with Romain is that um, these um, these currents, you know, these two D currents, these uh, super translation currents, stress tensor, and so on, 
are what they are naturally from the point of view of the gravity solution space are precisely these fluxes for so for instance the um, the super transition current is related to the integration of the time derivative of the bondy mass aspect corrected by some terms it's actually uh, related to a vial um, whatever to the to newman penrose constant but um, mm -hmm. So there is a precise mapping between BMS fluxes, uh, so time differences of these things at sky plus plus and sky plus minus, and the, and the soft and the soft modes. Um, so this 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 is a uh, yeah this is well understood. Please, please. Okay. Okay. I see. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Maybe to other speakers. I was just wondering whether these, uh, uh, this, uh, de uh, the degeneracy of the world sheet action, when the determinant of the world sheet metric goes to zero and the action reduces to x dot mu, x dot mu, whether uh, on the surface of a black hole, the action would reduce to x dot u, x dot u, where u is t minus r, because uh, particles are traveling at the speed of light on the surface of the black hole, and t minus r is the right coordinate, right? The light cone coordinate, which parameterizes such motions. So I was just wondering whether on the surface of the black hole, the action degenerates to x dot u, x dot u. I don't know. Yeah, Sundar, it's a question addressed to whom? People working on uh, in, in, this in, thing? Or? Yeah, the, the, the session that followed uh, at the end, uh, after Laura's talk. Okay. All the people. The I people. think it's for Aritro. Aritro or Mang Manglesh or something. Yeah, Aritro or Manglesh. Okay. Ma yeah, so. I don't know what, what do you mean by x dot u x dot u? Do you mean like del u x del u x? Hello? Well, I suppose he means that u is the only uh, light cone coordinate that you have. Right, right. So, so yeah, in, in, in general, you could also have uh, let's say uh, BMS symmetry on shell for that sort of action. For example, I mean, if you only have like, let's say sigma minus, not sigma minus, like X minus coordinates left, then you can still write down a, 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 a sort of a chiral sort of theory on one of the light cone directions. And uh, from the uh, constraint analysis, I think that will still give you uh, BMS symmetries. Uh, like for example, these ambitwister strings that we have been talking about, you know, in uh, different con contexts, uh, that those are actually uh, they those actually have that sort of structure where uh, only one of the in in the in the so only one of the like either Z or Z bar survives, and you have half of a CFT action basically, just del x whole square or del bar x whole square. Yeah, so the, that's Algebraic, that's algebraically, what... that is algebraically that is my idea that you still have a null metric there, and you can you can you can have uh, BMS symmetries from from there. Uh, but yeah, physically, I I'm I'm not I I, I don't know. You know, the other question about so this, uh, the understanding that the, on the surface of the black hole, the spectrum would reduce to that of the ambitwister string. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not entirely sure about that. I, I I can just give you an algebraic comment that this is this is what happens. But I I I I cannot tell you that you know when you uh, maybe yeah sorry I I I don't have anything more intelligent to say about this uh, this is this is uh, yeah yeah I mean you can uh, what you can probably do is probably take a scalar field and try to try to put it in a, a inherently Carroll background I mean you can take uh, a Carroll background with Carroll diffeomorphisms uh, and put, try to put the scalar field on top of that and see that the most general action hold that you get from that, uh, whether, whether those are BMS symmetries or not. 
Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, so it's already quarter to seven. Uh, maybe we can wind up this uh, discussion session. Uh, so I would like to thank all the speakers today for uh, uh, being here for the uh, discussion session. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's time for us to close the session now. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, over to Alok. Right. Uh, I think uh, what I had requested is probably uh, is happening. Uh, so essentially, uh, uh, I would uh, humbly request that those of us who are not on the ISM 2011